putting the CO2 in, into, into rocks um, is different than filling up a cavern or a tank. Sometimes people's experience with gas is as filling a tank and they think about pinpricking it and it all coming out. That won't happen when you put CO2 into rocks. The space in the rocks that's occupied by CO2 is, are very small, so you, you can hardly see them. Um, but nevertheless, there's quite a lot of space between the sand grains, and that's where the CO2 is going in. People don't have a lot of experience with the physics of very small spaces, except we do. The kind of experience we have with small spaces is clothes. Your clothes have spaces in them. Your cloth of your clothes has spaces in them the same size as the spaces between the sand grains. So I invite people to try it at home. I do it like in low third. Or you could spill a little drop of water on your clothes and it sinks in. If you spilled water on a raincoat, which has no spaces, you can wipe it right off. Spill water on your clothes that have the tiny spaces in between the fibers of your cloth that's between the sand grains. It goes in, you can wipe it all you want, but that it's going to stay that water spot's going to stay there. In fact, that's why we have to do laundry. It's because you can't get fluids out of small spaces very easily. So, the CO2 that goes in between the sand grains gets stuck by capillary forces between the sand grains and and it's stuck there permanently. It's still CO2, but it's stuck permanently.